Okay, hello, my name is Vladimir. I'm a member of an Evangelical Christian Church in Ukraine, Netopo. And today is uh, 3rd of October, 2016. And we are going to ask questions to Dr. Hoen. All right, uh, first, Dr. Hoen, could you please uh, tell us uh, how did you become a Christian? Well, in 1969, I was 16 years old. And someone asked me the question if I knew if I was going to heaven if I died. And I said, no, I don't know. I go to church, you know, pretty regular, but uh, and I try to be good, but no, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. And they said, could, could we show you? I said, yes, I'd like that. So they showed me from the Bible that we're all sinners and we all deserve to go to hell. But Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for our sins. And if we will accept him as our savior, he will forgive us and make us part of his family. You know, the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So, during 9th, 1969, is when I prayed and asked the Lord to forgive me and save me, and I got born again into God's family. All right. Uh, you mentioned somewhere that you had an opportunity to work for a Caterpillar company and uh, you could make a bunch of money at that time, uh, but you choose to do something else, to win souls and to serve the, ro the Lord. Uh, could you tell us about that choice and how did that happen? I think that that's important uh, thing to know for other Christians. Yes, I... Um went to Bible college to be a preacher, graduated in 1974, and I was uh, assistant pastor at a church for a while and then became the pastor in Pecan, Illinois, near Peoria. Um, <clears throat> I started a Christian school and really fell in love with the education part of it and ended up teaching uh, school, math and science, for 15 years. I don't remember exactly when it was, but uh, you know, in Christian education, Christian work, you don't <clears throat> you don't make a lot of money. And I had someone offer who was uh, able to pull the strings to say uh, uh, I could get you a job at Caterpillar Tractor Company. And for those who live in the Peoria area, they know if you get on a Caterpillar, that's you're set for life. You know, that's the cush gravy job that everybody wants. Good money, good benefits. Um, my father retired from Caterpillar after working, and my wife's father retired from Caterpillar. So <clears throat> I was very familiar with a lot of people I went to high school with at East Peoria High School, uh, worked at Caterpillar all their life and retired after 30 years. So I went through the interview process and they said, okay, you're hired, go out, down the hallway to the last room on the right and pick up your glasses and report to work Monday. And they'll, they'll have the final paperwork for you to sign. I walked, by, walked down the hallway, right past that room, and walked out in the car, and sat in the parking lot in the car, and, and cried like a baby for an hour. And I said, Lord, I, I don't want to build tractors. I want to change lives. I want to win souls. I want to do something for your kingdom. Uh, the money is very tempting and very nice, but that's not the purpose. That's not, that's not what you want for me. Um, so. Bottom line is I did not take the job, and I ended up continuing to work in Christian work for, and still up to this day now, almost 48 years I've been doing things in the Lord's work. So, yes, I understand the temptation uh, that the world offers to God's people to, you know, come with me and we'll make money and you'll be happy. Uh, and maybe you will be, but <clears throat> I couldn't do it. I, I turned it down. had a similar job at General Motors. I could have gone into General Motors, same same kind of offer. They wanted me to go to school to be a general foreman, uh, which is the real big you know, at, at General Motors. And I, God called me to preach, and so that's that's what I did. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go to the Bible questions. Uh, who wrote Genesis? Very cool. And there are actually ten different authors for the book of Genesis. There's no question, based on quite a few New Testament verses, that Moses wrote Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You know, it'll say, all scattered through the Bible, did not Moses write, and it quote a verse. And the, you look up where those verses come from, though, and they come from, uh, uh, not ne never from Genesis. Uh, it is never recorded that Moses wrote uh, Genesis. If you look at the book of Genesis, uh, 
there are ten different times where it says, has a phrase, these are the generations of. Mm -hmm. The first one occurs in chapter 2, verse number 4. Apparently that is God himself writing chapter 1. Who else would have known? You know, Adam wasn't there since day 6. Who would know what happened on day 3, and day 4, and day 5? It had to be God write chapter 1. And then Adam actually wrote chapter part of chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. And he signed off at chapter 5, verse 1, where it says, These are the generations of Adam. That's Adam signing off. He even uses a different name. Instead of calling him God, like Genesis 1 says, it's, he calls him Lord God in chapter 2. So it's a different person writing. I don't think there's any question there. And then Noah must have written chapter 5 and part of chapter 6, because in chapter 6, verse 9, it says again, These are the generations of Noah. Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, would have written part of Genesis. They were there. Uh, I cover this in great detail with all the Bible verses up on screen on my video number 7, if you want to get my DVD series. Part 7 is uh, dealing with that topic. But I show all the, all the phrases. I think the last one is in chapter 37. Uh, these are the generations of... But there are 10 different times where that phrase appears in Genesis. So, bottom line is, there are 10 authors, all of them eyewitnesses. Moses probably only edited it or put it together into book form. He, as you know, went to school to be Pharaoh in Egypt, would have had access to all the official court records and probably the world's best library at the time and could have easily could have easily gathered those those records together. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well in Genesis one four it says and God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. Why would God call the light good? I mean, if that's just a particle or whatever it is. And what does phrase divided the light from the darkness actually mean? I mean, how can you divide? I don't know. Well, it brings up many interesting topics when it comes to light and darkness. Uh, there's really no such thing as darkness. There's just the absence of light is the way some people define it. But God created darkness. <coughs> He says so in the book of Jeremiah, I forget, that God creates the darkness. There's nothing wrong with dark. Uh, but it's an absence of light or an absorption of all the light. In the case of our black paint, for instance, it absorbs, absorbs all light. So this is fine. I like to sleep when it's dark. I don't like to sleep when the light's on. It's hard to sleep. Uh, and some, some plants and animals require darkness, periods of darkness. So I don't think it's... God saw everything. At the end of day six, he saw everything was very good. That would include the darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in Genesis 1, 26, it says, And God uh, said, Let us make man. Uh, Whose us? Is that refers to the Trinity? Or why did they translate it us in there? Well, that's the best answer anybody's ever given is that, yes, God is a, a trinity. Mm -hmm. A father, son, Lord. I don't know anybody who's that. We can get some clues, you know. There, uh, there are all sorts of illustrations. They all fall short. You know, I am a father and a son and a brother. I'm only one person. Space has three dimensions, length, width, and height. But it's, it's one entity called space with three very distinct parts to it. Mm -hmm. which are really inseparable. Um, time has three parts, past, present, future. You cannot have any one without having the other two. Yeah, right. There cannot only be a future. Then, you know, so future related to what? Well, related to the present or the past. So you have to have all three. So in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, that's time, God created the heaven and the earth. There's matter. So time, space, matter is a trinity. Each of those is also a trinity. Time is a trinity, past, present, future. Space is a trinity, linked with height. Matter is a trinity, solid liquid gas. So there appears to be a trinity. I've never met, met anybody who understands it all. Okay. Uh, I can show you that the Bible clearly teaches it. And as I've said many times, you don't have to understand something to believe in it. Mm -hmm. I believe in gravity. Okay. There isn't anybody in the world who knows what gravity is. If I drop this pen, it will fall. Why? What is pulling it this way? Why not this way, or this way, or this way? Why? What is... They say, well, it's the attraction of molecules, the Earth's mass expects... I taught physics for years. 
I understand the acceleration due to gravity and some of the things about gravity that have been discovered about it, but that doesn't tell me what it is. Nobody knows what is gravity. So it's I believe in it. I'm using it right now. I'm sitting on the floor, not the ceiling, you know, because of gravity. Yeah. So I don't have to understand it to believe it. Uh, same with God. I don't have to understand all about God in order to believe Him. Okay, thank you. Uh, in Genesis 1.14, Bible says, And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven, and to divide the day from the night, and uh, let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. What signs and seasons does this verse speak? Is that some kind of... Uh, what signs is there? Well, great question. We, of course, have four seasons, and everybody thinks it's probably the same thing, but I don't know. Um, if the Earth was not tilted over 23 and a half degrees as it spins, we would not have summer, winter, oh, fall, and spring. We would have all springtime all the time. Uh, I, I happen to believe, and I cannot prove this, but I happen to believe that during the flood in the days of Noah, the Earth uh, obtained its current tilt, tilted over 23 and a half degrees, but it did not have that before. There are several things that might have caused that. One is just the shifting of the masses of the water that was under the crust coming to the surface. I covered that by video number two. Uh, if you watch my videos on drdino.com, D R D I N O, you can get all that. But uh, Or the Earth may have been struck by an ice meteor. We get hit by comets and meteors all the time. Uh, if the Earth got struck by a big one and the ice dumped on the North and South Pole, like I cover on video number six, that would have caused the spinning Earth to wobble, and today it is spinning 23 and a half degrees, causing the seasons. But I don't think they had that before in Genesis chapter one. So when it says he made the sun, moon, and stars for signs and for seasons, it may mean something totally different than summer, winter, spring, fall. It may mean that there were 12 sections to the sky, like a zodiac. And as, you, as the Earth travels around the sun, it has different stars that are visible at, at midnight because we're moving around the sun and you have a different background set of stars. Mm -hmm. I happen to believe that God gave Adam the whole gospel story in the stars. And you start with Virgo the Virgin and you end with Leo the Lion. And that has now been perverted into the horoscope, you know, that people talk about the age of Aquarius and all that. I think that's all a perversion of an original biblical truth. Uh, in Genesis 2.17 it says, uh, But for the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Why didn't Adam die on the same day as he, as he ate the tree, uh, from the tree? Two answers to that one. One is that there are three different kinds of death. There is physical death, where your spirit leaves your body. We're all familiar with that. But there's also spiritual death, where you're separated from God, and there's eternal death, where you're separated from God forever in hell. So, on, and then you got to look at what does that word day mean? The day that they ate of the fruit, as in the 24-hour day, they got separated from God. Within 1,000 years, they got separated from their body. They died. So it may tie into Psalms chapter 90 and Second Peter chapter 3 that one day is like a thousand years. So that, that verse might actually have a double meaning. <clears throat> they died spiritually that day, they died physically that day, me meaning with, within a, less than a thousand years where they were designed to live forever. That's the best I know on that one. All right. Uh, how could Eve talk to a snake? Some people claim that it couldn't be a true story or a real story or historical event because she talked to a snake. People don't talk to a snake today. Well, either Eve was brand new at this creation and she didn't know animals weren't supposed to talk. Maybe it was, you know, she wasn't surprised because, you know, she was freshly created herself. And maybe she thought, oh, maybe all animals talk. It was a whole new world to her. It might be that it was the devil speaking through the snake. Uh, just like a puppet master speaks to a puppet, you know, and makes move the hand movement. It, the snake may have simply been animated by Satan. That seems to be the most likely case. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right, people don't talk to snakes uh, normally <laughs> today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, when God cursed the serpent, he said, Upon thy, thy belly shall thou go. 
Did snake had legs before, or maybe it would, could fly? I mean, something. Well, it does not say which, but it's not a curse to crawl on your belly if you're already crawling on your belly. Yeah. So obviously he had some other means of getting around, either flying, or walking, or both. So he might have lost legs or wings or both legs and wings. The Bible doesn't say. Okay. Uh, what does the phrase "for all flesh had corrupted uh, his way up on the earth" in the Genesis six two mean? Some people say that it is that probably Chuck Missler claims that it could be some genetical ex experiments or something like that. Uh, what would you say on that? Uh, again, I don't know that one. I don't think anybody does. Uh, <coughs> One theory is that it was indeed genetic experiments where they were doing genetic manipulation or cross-species uh, cross uh, pollination, you know, humans and apes or humans and some, some other dogs mating or something, I don't know. But uh, there may have been a mixing of the genetic code that caused God to uh, have to step in and do something. Also, or, or maybe just everyone was simply wicked. You don't have to be any genetic multiple uh, manipulation if everybody's, you know, cursing, swearing, destroying, uh, committing immoral, oral, immoral acts or murder, whatever. If all flesh has simply gone wicked, God decided to destroy the earth for that reason. We'll see. All right. Uh, when did animals become carnivorous? In Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-nine and thirty, it says everything ate plants. <coughs> All the creatures, man and animals, were all vegetarian. Genesis chapter on verse 29. After the flood in Genesis chapter 9, God said, Noah, now it's okay to eat meat, and the animals are going to be afraid of you. So the animals were not afraid until after the flood, which means during the flood they were not afraid, and Noah didn't have cages on the ark, he had rooms. Mm -hmm. Animals would come and go as they pleased. He didn't have to go feed them. Just put out a pile of food and they'll come find the food. When they're done, go back to their room if they want. It appears that probably after the flood, man became carnivorous. Animals did too. But the Bible doesn't address the topic. All right. Uh, but if then animals become carnivorous uh, just, just during the flood or uh, after the flood, why do we see uh, the... the fishes eating some other animals? Do, do you mean that it just in the moment of flood they became just just uh, carnivorous just just in uh, in a couple of seconds or it could be uh, could happen gradually and slowly yeah the Bible doesn't say I would suspect it probably happened gradually slowly because of the new climate the people before the flood were living to be 900 years old after the flood only 400 okay so something changed after a few generations of 400 year olds now it drops off to 200 Mm -hmm. So something certainly changed because of the flood, probably. Uh, the canopy of water that used to be overhead fell down, I believe. And so now we could fly to the moon, whereas before the flood you probably could not, because there was a canopy of ice above maybe 10 miles above the atmosphere, above the earth. Uh, I covered that on video number two of my video series on drdino.com. There are some creationists who do not believe there was a canopy above the atmosphere. I completely disagree. I think there was. It's mentioned in uh, Genesis 1 about water above the firmament. Uh, it's mentioned in Psalm 148. Uh, and 2 Peter chapter 3 says the earth was created in the water and out of the water. So I think there's too much evidence to indicate, yes, there was a, a canopy of water above the atmosphere. That... Uh, probably help them live to be 900 years old. Okay, and uh, does the phrase in Genesis 3.6 and gave also unto her husband uh, with, with, with her means that uh, the Eve uh, had the leadership over Adam. Was, was, was Adam created as a head, as a leader, or he wasn't? And, in, and the leadership of man is a curse, basically. Uh, there was no there was no mention of leadership until after they sinned. After they sinned, God looked at the snake and said, "You have to crawl on your belly." Mm -hmm. Then He looked at Eve and said, "You have pain in childbearing and multiply your reproduction," which might mean that now you can get pregnant every month, whereas before it was one every ten years. I don't know. And then He said to them, "Indeed, Adam is going to rule over you." 
So the, the authority in the home was given after they sinned, and man was made the authority in the home. If that was not the case before, they were just partners, equal right, equal partners. Okay, uh, then probably the last question I got to you. Um, the Bible also mentions the head coverings for a woman and man, and uh, it also speaks about the uh, the the length of the hair. Is it applied to us today, or it, it doesn't have anything to do with us? The only passage I'm familiar with is the First Corinthians, where God said the woman should have long hair as a sign of her submission to her husband, and if she's going to pray she should have her head covered and it says the hair is the covering so if a woman has long hair there's no need to do anything else if a woman has short hair according to first corinthians that she should cover her head maybe with a hat or something i know some churches they always the women cover their head uh which i think is unnecessary because the hair is the covering according to first corinthians chapter seven that is the covering if you have long hair the women to have long hair is supposed to be a sign of submission to their husband and a husband's short hair is a sign of his submission to God. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Ken Hovind. Uh, I was happy to talk to you today.